Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about this DeWalt Flexible Edger System, okay? We're gonna go over this edger system, top to bottom, stick with this. All right, y'all, so this right here is DeWalt's Flexible, brand new to market, um, edger system. It's really their power head, power head system with the edger attachment, but the, right now, as you see it in this configuration, uh, plus an additional charger that's not pictured here is model number DCED472X1. If you buy it as a tool only without the charger and the battery, the model number is DCED472. Okay, the X1 just really denotes that it's coming with this 9 amp hour battery and a charger. Okay, 20 volt max 9 amp hour battery. If you're using it in a flex volt, it's really a 3 amp hour. Uh, battery okay so while we are talking about model numbers let's go over and touch on that just a little bit more because it is a little bit confusing okay so like I said this is the power head model so the power head model number is DCST 972 the reason that is confusing is because the if you buy the current uh, power head model string trimmer the model number on that is DCST 972X1 and that's with the uh, battery and the charger. If you buy it with just the tool only without the battery and charger, it's DCST 972, but then that is also the model number of the power head, right? So that's a little confusing in itself. Um, the model number on this edger attachment is DWOAS4ED, okay? So while we're talking about this power head and all the attachments, let's go over quickly some of the other attachments they currently do have. You can get a brush cutter attachment, which is the model number DWOAS5BC. You can get a pole saw attachment, which is DWOAS6PS. You can get a blower attachment, DWOAS7BL. And you can get an articulating hedge trimmer attachment, which is DWOAS. 8HT, okay? So those are some of the other stuff they currently have on the market right now. I'm sure as time goes on, they'll probably go ahead and release a few more items as time goes, like I said. Um, one thing I did notice was immediately missing as I was investigating getting the pull saw attachment, right? Was the extension shaft that some tools have to allow you to reach extended, um, extended reach, right? So if you're using a pole saw, that would probably be something useful because you know, if you're sitting on the ground trying to cut a limb off the tree, um, a little more reach, it would usually be pretty helpful, okay? But anyways, um, this is their FlexVolt model. Um, before we get too much into details, let's go ahead quickly and take a look at the marketing hype. So this tool gets the versatility and the cutting power needed to finish the job with a DeWalt 60 volt max uh, edger attachment. The high efficiency brushless motor maximizes runtime in the product life while consistently providing the capacity to tackle tough overgrowth, edging, and withstand heavy duty use. Easily convert this edger into outdoor tools with the universal attachment capability that allows you to connect additional add-ons to take on more work. It has a 60 volt max uh, flex volt battery that powers 60 volt DeWalt tools and it's also backwards compatible with DeWalt 20 volt tools. It also features, uh, going into a little bit more detail, high versatility and productivity, DeWalt universal attachment uh, capable capability to accept additional tool pieces. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that in a second. Ease of movement with large wheel for mobility while edging, long run time edge more with less and professional grade with a professional grade motor, durability and efficiency with a seven and a half inch hardened steel blade and up to a two and a half inch adjustable blade depth. The speed control for this uh, tool is optimized with power and runtime with a variable speed trigger with high low settings. Um, like I said already, the blade adjustment depth can go down to two and a half inches and the weight of the tool right now is 10.71 inches, okay? The other thing to note on here real quick is it includes a three year warranty, a limited uh, warranty, a one year free service and a 90 day money back guarantee, okay? So let's talk about that universal attachment system here real quick, okay? So right now, um, this system uses the square shaft design that if you're probably used to using other uh, power head tools, 
um, like gas power tools, most of those seem to be um, square head design, okay, or square shaft design. So unlike the Ego, which kind of uses its own proprietary design, you can't really use the Ego attachments on here. Um, and you also cannot use the Makita attachments on here because those also use a proprietary shaft design, okay? But there are other tools um, like I've seen, like there was a Craftsman um, one and also a Ryobi one that we've seen that has a square shaft design that does work on here. And if you have any other attachments that use the standard universal square shaft design, that will probably also work on here. But I'm not gonna guarantee that because I haven't tested each of those person personally, but I have seen them work, okay? So that in itself is actually huge, mainly because a lot of people buying into the system will most likely not be their first attach or uh, edger system, I had to guess, right? So um, having, if you're coming from a background of, you know, like having other attachment uh, capable systems, being able to use those attachments with just this power head would be really useful, right? So they did not go down the other routes like, you know, Makita, Ego, and I'm sure some other people have gone down that route, but this one does actually work really well with that, okay? So let's talk a little bit about this power head. Um, one thing I noticed immediately while using this is that um, this power head is a little bit lower on the speed than um, their first, uh, generation flexible string trimmer. I believe that string trimmer went up to somewhere around 6,600 RPMs. This um, on high will go right up to, I believe, around 5,500 RPMs. So it's missing right around 1,100 um, RPMs. Actually, no, I believe it goes to 5,800 RPMs, which is just shy of like 800 RPMs. And I noticed that immediately because I used the um, first generation flex for string trimmer all the time. That's like my go-to one. It's so nice. I just can't tell you how much I like that string trimmer. So one of the things I noticed was the uh, RPMs is a little bit down on this, okay? So let's bring you in closer and take a better look at it. So this right here is obviously where the motor and the battery part is, okay? So on this part, the motor is right here. The battery fits in right back here. And this stuff right here, this black rubber over mold stuff is a nice, Standard uh, rubber over mold you see pretty much on all DeWalt tools, nothing too special going on there. It does, however, on the bottom uh, rest on these two feet. Um, I believe that's, I don't know, maybe it's there just in case you're putting it on something slippery or whatnot, which I can't imagine you are if you are, um, I don't know, putting it down somewhere. I guess if you're on like a slippery deck or something, you could probably put it down. But anyways, it does rest right there, okay? Um, and unlike gas tools or even some battery power tools, you don't have to worry about this part getting too hot because under heavy usage, I've noticed that the motor may get a little warm, but your arm, like for instance, if you're using it like this, uh, will not feel any, or the front part of your forearm will not feel any warmth because this part seems protected pretty well, at least in my uh, opinion, okay? Battery attachment system is here. Just take a flexible battery, drop it in, no problem, right? Actually, I'm gonna leave that in there to show you uh, the trigger system, okay? So here is the trigger system. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it has a low and a high speed. I'm almost always using it on high, and I believe on high speed, the speed maxes out around 5,800 RPMs, okay? So on this one, the trigger is almost a double safety trigger, okay? So on the first generation ones, you literally just have a, you know, press this down trigger, right? On this one, you can't, you actually have another lever or lever you have to press forward and then press the safety down. So it's in a way you can think of it as a double safety and this is a variable speed trigger. But the variable speed part of it is not a linear uh, variable speed, it's really more like a step up uh, variable speed. We'll demonstrate here real quick. We'll put it on low first. Just listen to the uh, sounds coming out of it and watch the trigger, okay? Right? So you can see it kind of steps up a little bit. Um, it's not perfectly smooth, but it does seem to work generally pretty well. So uh, that's just something to point out. It doesn't really bother me too much. Um, I believe on the first generation model, it was a lot more linear. So that one was obviously uh, nicer, or at least I'm used to that. So uh, that's what I'm expecting. 
But anyways, uh, not gonna gripe about that too much there, okay? Um, obviously there's a little sticker here to say don't put your hand there. Uh, I'm not sure why, maybe the vibrations or whatnot. And this is the handle that comes with it, okay? You do have to attach the handle when you pull it out of the box. There's four bolts and uh, nuts you have to attach it with, but there's generally instruction manual, which you probably don't even have to look at to attach this right here. It's not like there's any markings that says put it here. You literally just put it here. If it's more comfortable for you up here, then do that. If it's more comfortable lower, you can do that too, okay? Um, not too much going on side on the bottom. Except on the back side here, you'll literally see it's a little bit upside down, but it literally says DCST 972, okay? Um, let's talk about the uh, drive shaft here real quick. Not sure if it's gonna come out really uh, nicely in this little corner here, but this is a square shaft uh, drive shaft. So it's actually really nice, as we talked about earlier, because you can put universal or other uh, square shaft design uh, attachments in here and it works pretty well, okay? So if you look here, um, obviously you just insert it. If it has like a button or a nub, it sticks out right there. Um, if you are using certain things like pole saws or certain things, there's actually uh, circles and things open so that you can either need to press it, you know, flip it up like, you know, 90 degrees or whatnot, or even a head trim or flip it down 90 degrees, right, or whatnot. You just put it in here. Once it connects, you can just crank this um, wing nut bolt down. Actually, in this case, I believe it's a, it's a wing bolt um, and it, generally stays pretty uh, um, clamped on there. No real issues, okay? This right here is DeWalt's edger system. Before we get too far into this part of the business, let's talk about this shaft here real quick, okay? So here is obviously the shaft part that connects to the um, power head, okay? As you can see right here, it is a square shaft design, right? Um, there's grease in there, it comes loaded with grease. Um, I do probably recommend you grease it up every, you know, every probably at least once a season when you're using it. Um, so, you know, it generally stays pretty well greased. Um, here's a little button that would help lock it in. There's even an arrow right here that says, here's the button, so you can't really screw that up too easily, okay? It's a curved shaft design. I'm not sure how well it's gonna come up, but if you look here, it's a little bit curved shaft design. It's not straight shaft, so that's interesting on itself. And here is the business part of the edger, okay? So this entire or housing right here is plastic. And I believe that is probably a mistake, at least in my opinion, mainly because um, the way that all the stuff that attaches to the housing, um, it's at risk when the housing cracks or breaks, right? So we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But as we're here, let's talk about this um, blade system or this blade. So DeWalt says this is a seven and a half inch blade and um, when it wears out, and it probably will wear out relatively soon, I've already used this like a couple, couple times, uh, multiple times. Um, I believe I'm just gonna replace it with an eight inch blade because I did test to see if an eight inch blade would work and it does work generally pretty well, okay? So this is a uh, made in USA uh, 6477 um, eight inch blade. This is the blade that I pretty much use on the Egos when every time I replace it at least once or twice a season. And if you look at it, it does, it's about a half inch, uh, quarter inch longer on each side. So it's about a half inch longer, but it does go through the housing and clears the housing pretty well, okay? So I would use just a standard eight inch blade in here. I'm sure there's probably some performance impact, but I can't imagine it being too bad, okay? There's also obviously the little um, uh, icons or labels on here that says, tighten this way so if you're loosening it, it's not too bad, okay? The other thing to take away and note from here is there is a guide system um, that connects right here. On this one is on the back part of the wheel. I'm actually used to using the Eagle one and on the Eagle one, the, um, the guide is actually right here under the arbor. So it gets a little bit getting used to, but it does not take too long. Once you get used to it fairly quickly, it's, it's pretty standard, not too much going on there, okay? Um, while we're on this page or this part, let me show you this annoying little plastic piece, okay? So this plastic piece I believe goes on right here, okay? And I believe the entire purpose of this is to help uh, reduce the kick out of the dust or of the dirt that's literally getting kicked up, right? So the annoying thing about this, just look at it and just, just imagine what could get possibly annoying about this, okay? So if you're cutting uh, or edging, right, the grass is here, okay? So you got this little plastic piece sticking out this way. So as, as you're going, just imagine the grass getting caught right here, right? 
and it'll get caught, it'll get caught, it'll get caught, it'll get caught. Um, so immediately I went ahead and took this thing off literally be, um, during the first usage because there's really no point of this being here because this being here actually does not block all the dirt going out anyways. So I believe this is completely useless and if I were you, I would take this off pretty much immediately because you'll use it once with it on and you'll know exactly what I mean, okay? I don't know how that got past user um, testing or whatnot, but that should have literally have not even got past testing, okay? So on the back here, um, there is, you, you can obviously adjust this to go down or up, right? And to kind of adjust the uh, depth of this wheel. Um, it's not a great wheel by any means, but this part is metal, so that is nice, but this housing part is plastic, okay? So on that part, and this is why I would say the housing being plastic is a mistake because the housing is plastic and then the way that this uh, drive shaft and this uh, gearing part attaches to everything else is attached through like this um, plastic housing, right? So if this housing here breaks, right, or cracks or whatnot, you really can't use this wheel. Um, that's kind of why I'm saying this entire housing or at least the back part of it should have been metal, but they decided to go plastic. I mean, I'm sure it's gonna hold up pretty well. Maybe not under commercial usage, but for like residential homeowner usage, it'd probably be just fine, okay? So just make sure you keep that in mind. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you can't see it, it is a, um, a curve shaft design so it generally works pretty well okay so while we're on this front let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how well it kicks out the dirt okay so when you're cutting this way um, it's spinning so the dirt obviously will kick out towards the front which is actually really convenient and a lot of it will kick out the back okay so one of the things I noticed immediately was that the dirt being kicked out while cutting was significantly more therefore leaving the part that you've already cut much cleaner. And that is very useful on multiple different fronts. One, the cleanup is much easier. Two, um, everyone who edges knows that concrete along the edges is not perfect. Sometimes there's, there's dips, sometimes there's you know cracks and chips and all kinds of stuff. So with the Eagle one I'm always used to using, sometimes you would cut through and because the grass clippings or the dirt is really left there in place, um, you can't really see if you've cleared everything. So you may have to go back after you know brush it off or blew it off and have to go back because it didn't clear a certain area, right? But with this one, because the dirt is getting cleared, you can easily tell real quickly that certain pieces may not have cleared. And um, you can immediately just cut it right then again real quick versus having to wait until after you've brushed it off and cleaned it all off. The other thing I noticed was in certain areas that I know I have to cut twice or, or even three times is that this one will cut it in one, in one pass. And that one actually is very useful and you can tell immediately if you're using the Eagle one and coming to this one, this one definitely has more power. And um, take it from me, I'm literally using it on speed two. Um, I'm sure somebody's gonna frown upon that, but uh, using it on speed two allows me to walk, if not run with this, uh, or power walk, uh, real quickly. And you can get the job done so much faster. I can't even ex uh, uh, explain or compare how much faster you could work with this versus the Eagle one. Um, not throwing too much hate on the Eagle one. I mean, that one has served us well, very well, for multiple years ever since we've had it. The convenience of that um, actually is really nice and, and works really well. I um, have replaced these blades almost at least twice a season, I believe, using the Eagle ones. So uh, it have, has worked quite well, but I do want to say this one definitely seems way more powerful. All right, so now let's connect this system back together, right? It's not too hard, literally. You just take it, you slide it right in. Obviously trying to do this backwards and not on camera is always harder. Once that nub is in, you literally just crank this um, wing nut down and you are ready to go, okay? So one thing I noticed about this is uh, I'm about 5'10 and a half, 5'10, 5'11, whatever you want to call it. 
um, and it's generally pretty comfortable. Um, I'm used to using the uh, flex fault strength trimmer. That one's usually been pretty comfortable. Well, this one is really no different. If you're used to using that, uh, you're not gonna have any issues. But one thing I will note is that because this um, uh, blade is on the right side, I'm usually on uh, standing here and then holding it on my right, right? Versus, you know, other people who may be using it on their left if it, the blade was on the other side. I do, in a way, kind of wish um, that it was a straight shaft design, mainly because that's the one that I'm used to. But this one is a curved shaft. I'm not gonna complain about it too much because you know you could get used to it real quick. But it generally works really well, okay? And it is fairly light. I'm not sure if somebody's gonna say it's heavy. It's right around like 10.7 something pounds. So you could literally run uh, with this really quickly. And I will throw some other clips that usually help us work really quick. So. What can we really say about this? I mean, I would say uh, this tool right now, I believe is somewhere around uh, 229. You could generally get it on sale. You could probably buy it as some kind of holiday special or some kind of combo kit or something like that. I believe uh, this is the one that I posted a deal about a while ago, months ago. I don't know how early ago, but months ago about the one from Granger that came with another battery. So that was good. I can't remember how much it was. We're gonna have to go look at it, but it seemed to be a really great deal. And because if you're already in the DeWalt FlexBolt system, um, it obviously makes sense to get this because why would you buy a um, into a OPE line that only makes OPEs, right? I mean, sure, if you're mostly doing OPE stuff and that stuff was way greater, you, you wouldn't, it would make sense to go for something like that. Let's take Toro for, ex for uh, example. Toro has their uh, battery powered, you know, lawnmower, OPE, other systems. And that stuff generally works pretty good. I'm not gonna complain about it. I mean, it, it works generally pretty well, but they don't make power tools, right? So um, if you were to buy, let's say DeWalt, Milwaukee, Makita, whatever, you can pretty much use the same battery system for all of their tools. And that's kind of where I would recommend most people go. So you're not in too many different battery uh, platforms. But uh, with this one, I will say um, is a really nice system mainly because uh, the flexible batteries generally work pretty well, and if you're already in the wall system, you're always going to have enough batteries ready to go, okay? So uh, for me, usually I have to run through at least two 2.5 amp hour Eagle batteries to cut around uh, the half acre that we currently have here. But on this DeWalt flexible system, I can use this one um, 9 amp hour battery which is really a three amp hour uh, 60 volt battery and cut around um, the entire um, compound more than once and it will still have about one bar, sometimes somewhere between one bar, sometimes two bars remaining, okay? So with that being said, I believe the battery efficiency seems to be greater and I can obviously work faster, okay? Um, the Eagle one, like I said, I do have to cut it multiple times so that obviously gets annoying too. So anyways, with that being said, do I believe this is a good tool? Most definitely, yes. Is this probably the best at battery powered edger system I've used? Um, I'm gonna go out and say right now, I'm gonna go with the yes, mainly because I have used the Cobalt 40 volt one. I have used the uh, Makita one, which actually works really well, but I just believe that this one is more powerful, so it feels more powerful. So I'm gonna go with that. I don't believe, oh no. Milwaukee definitely makes one on their uh, quick lock system. I haven't had a chance to use that one too much. I have used it once, not too much, so I can't remember too much about it. But would I use this one over the Ego one? Definitely, okay? Um, that's just my opinion. Um, no one sponsored the video. Nobody sent this to us. I'm just telling you as it is, okay? So hopefully these videos helped you guys out. Um, don't get too confused up on the model numbers. Just get whatever you need. If you don't need it, don't get it. If you need it, I'll definitely go with this. So hopefully these videos helped you guys out. Stay tuned for more videos next time, and then we'll see you guys next time.